And we know it is history, but when the Revolutionary War happened, it was news, of course. New book explores how those unfolding moments were covered. You're watching Starting Point, short break, and we're back in just a moment. So let's talk history for a moment, if we can. Most Americans, of course, learn about the Revolutionary War through their textbooks, some you know, movies. Occasionally, you check out the History Channel, and there'll be a documentary about the war. Uh, but uh, Tom Anderlich's new book, Reporting the Revolutionary War, Americans can now see a different side of the birth of our country, as it was reported in real time by journalists of the day. The book features articles and images taken from the author's personal collection of new original newspaper prints from the late 1700s. It gives a fascinating account of uh, Americans who witnessed the war unfold firsthand as it happened. The author is with us this morning. Uh, nice to have you with us. Appreciate it. So, first of all, I know that we often look at historical accounts or an interpretation of history, but you wanted to go to your own uh, account. Why do it this way? Well, for 200 plus years, historians have referenced these newspapers in the footnotes of their own analysis and interpretation. So, right. I wanted to, for the first time ever, really invert the traditional history book and provide full color access to the original newspapers that were the only mass media of the day. These are your documents. Where do you get them from? So very much like American Pickers, uh, I uh, traverse the, uh, the earth looking for historic documents in rare bookshops and with historic dealers wow. and uh, eBay, you name it. These are very much available just like any other historical collectible. Mm -hmm. oh, interesting. Okay, so let's look at some of the examples from the book. Um, here is uh, the first known quoting of taxation without representation. <laughs> May 10th, 1764, uh, five weeks after the British passed the Sugar Act, which we all know from our studies is really what kicked off this whole entire thing. Um, our other advices by the packet are that a scheme of taxation of the American colonies has for some time been in agitation with a capital A, that it had previous, been previously debated in Parliament whether they had the power to lay such a tax on colonies which had no representative in Parliament. Uh, that was an editorial. How much of these edit how powerful were the editorials of the time at spurring people mm. into action? Extremely uh, important and extremely powerful in that these are what fanned the flames of rebellion and sustained loyalty to the cause throughout the war. So a lot of historians are on record as saying without newspapers, there would have been no American Revolution. Could people read? I mean, was everybody, what was the amount of the population that was, that was reading a newspaper? Well, America was one of the most literate societies in the, in the time, uh, particularly the northern colonies and in New England. So literacy rates were very high. I used to be the executive editor of Chicago Defender, and it was always stunning to go back and literally read in real time back in you know, 1906 and 7 and 8 and 9. And so as you were doing this, uh, were you sitting here getting the ebb and flow of the story and you were saying, wow, how it was how it's moving in so many different ways? Very much so, yeah. It triggers in you an intense passion and enthusiasm for history that you previously didn't have. And so for me, for instance, here, I brought the uh, April 21st, 1775 issue of the New Hampshire Gazette. So two days after the Battle of Lexington and Concord, Perhaps the biggest breaking news of the 18th century. War starts. The American Revolution has begun. Uh, and this is only one of two newspapers printed on American soil of about 40 at the time that print the news on its front page. Mm. And the only newspaper of those 40 to print it with a headline, Bloody News. What was the other front page news of that, that day? What were the other newspapers? Uh, Not the Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other newspaper that printed uh, it on the front page was the Georgia Gazette in, yeah. in Savannah. But uh, front page news was typically essays, foreign news, advertisements, because pages two and three, the inside pages, were typeset later in the week. And so there you would normally find and the latest. They were talking about royal babies. <laughs> well, let me read the uh, Salem, Massachusetts, Essex Gazette, because they talk about the, the Boston Tea Party. They applied themselves to the destruction of the commodity in earnest, and in the pace of about two hours, broke up 342 chests and distar discharged their contents into the sea. A watch, as I am informed, was stationed to prevent embezzlement and not a single ounce of tea was suffered to be purloined by the populace and this of course makes me think back to what we all learned in school right nobody stole the tea they just ditched it into the ocean yeah that's one of the most popular eyewitness accounts that appeared in the uh, newspapers of the period and there you learn that somebody did try to pocket the tea and that they were quickly seized and pummeled by the <laughs> other rebel colonists participating in the tea party Are their editorials <laughs> their editorials make today's folks look like wimps I mean, they used to write some really tough uh, editorials. You're absolutely right. Yeah, this is where bias and propaganda was perfected. So much like, <laughs> <laughs> much like we have the left and right-leaning media uh, today, there, uh, there was uh, 
patriot and loyalist newspapers back then. And that's where you really see the fires uh, start. The book is called Reporting the Revolutionary War Before It Was History. It was news. Love that. <laughs> Pan Anderlich, nice to have you with us. Thanks Appreciate for having it. Me, Pleasure. Endpoints up next. We're back in a moment.